Clover for your food plots. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. <laughs> Over the last couple of years, I've increased the amount of clover that I had on this place, and I've been very happy with the results. Uh, a lot of people recommend, as a rule of thumb, some of the stuff that I read, that you want to keep about 60% of your food plots in clover. That makes sense to me, based on my experience here, because the deer are using that all summer long. They're using it clear into the fall, and if the temperatures uh, persist to be lower, like they were this last year, uh, and if other food supply is not available, the deer hit that clover well into December. In addition to that, it's the first thing that pops up in the spring. I've got green clover that I showed some pictures of on our Facebook page. I was really surprised. March 12th, here we are, not even in the middle of March, and there is green clover growing in the well pad food plot and that was the product of frost seeding the year before you can't beat that for that reason like they say 60 percent of your food plot should be in clover i realize there's a lot of guys out there that can do acres of soybeans and you got it made if you can do acres of soybeans i get that but for the poor man's food plot like me for the average guy trying to do food plots clover is tremendous it is a, just a great tool a great thing and you should be including that in your food plots i firmly believe for that reason about two-thirds that's my rule i guess about two-thirds my food plots I want to put in clover. The concept of frost seeding is pretty simple. It's just another way to get seed to soil contact. Seeds don't grow unless they have contact with the soil, of course. One way to do that is frost seeding. Basically, when you look at the ground this time of year, uh, a lot of the stuff that was growing on it last year is all dead, so the soil is a little bit exposed. You frost seed, and you're going to overseed about 125% of what you normally would put out there, but put a lot of that seed out there, and small seeds like clover work really good for this because as the ground expands and contracts during the day and night, in the day it's going to expand a little bit and open up those cracks and at night it's going to contract a little bit uh, because of the cooler temperatures. As that frost heaves, it's going to work that seed into the soil a little bit better. Perfect for small seeds like clover. So when the soil temperature reaches the proper level, like 50, 60 degrees for germination, they'll start growing. Those seeds will start growing. That's the basic concept behind frost seeding. Now, the last two winters here in northeastern Pennsylvania, it was extremely cold. I mean, we went for weeks where it didn't even get above freezing. This last winter, on the other hand, we kind of got a reward for going through those two terrible winters, and it was not all that bad. We had warmer temperatures all winter long. So I don't know if this is really frost seeding. It is going to be in the 20s overnight here, a couple of nights here in the next few days. And for that reason, this is a good time to be doing this. But uh, nevertheless, this is the time of year when you want to do it. Clover has lots of protein. It's great for deer for that reason. It's also highly digestible. It's one of those things that ruminators like deer can digest. Now, you want to pay attention to your different species. If you go to the farm store and you buy some of the species of clover there that they have for cows and for cattle, that's probably not the best for deer. They'll eat it, but they can't digest the stems as well from what I've read. So what you want to do is you want to look for uh, you know, some of those big bags of seed that are designed specifically for deer. What I do is I go to our local Agway and I just pick up straight out of their uh, big bag of seed, I get five pounds of Ladino clover. It's a white clover that's digestible for deer. They like it and it has frost seeded great. It grows great. The deer love it. No problem with that. If you're going to be planting in an area that's a little bit dry and you're worried about whether it's going to dry out during the year, you might want to frost seed some chicory in with your clover. You can just buy the seed or buy a, a, a seed blend that includes that. Chicory is a little bit better at dealing with the dry soils because it gets more of a root structure than, than uh, the clover does. Just for what that's worth, you might want to try that out in those kinds of food plots. But I like to keep it simple. I just stick with the clover. It has worked well for me, and the deer seem to love it. Just in case the conditions are a little different this year, you might want to include different species of clover also as a backup. In case one species of clover, one variety doesn't do well, maybe the other one will. In other words, include some white clovers and some red clovers. 
I also like Clover because it's shade tolerant and it does really well in areas like this. Now I'm sitting here in the staging food plot. Those of you watching Death by Bungie last year will remember this. I shot a woodchuck here last year. It wasn't even a food plot here last year. It was an area I was cleaning out. Um, I had a feeder here a couple years ago. Used to run feeders in this area and let the deer beat it all down good uh, over the winter. And then last year I cleaned out some trees and ended up planting a nice food plot here of no sweat blend from Antler King. That did extremely well here. I was very happy with it. I've limed it. I fertilized it the whole bit. This year I'll continue to do the same thing, but this year I'm going to switch over to clover. Another reason why I like clovers. Last year that Antler King No Sweat Blend grew great. It was nice and lush and thick and green, but the deer didn't hit that until January because they were still on the clover. They weren't interested in the high carbohydrate blends like that. They tend to gravitate, in my experience, to that clover first. For that reason, this little food plot right here this year will be clover. Now you don't have to frost seed into a spot like this. I will be frost seeding my existing clover food plots with clover seeds as well. Overseed it once again, make sure there's lots of clover seed in there. Hit those bare spots sometime in early summer too to make sure those thicken up good and basically just keep putting that stuff on there. Doesn't have to be when there's frost, it could be right before a light rain. If you put on some clover seed on bare ground before a light rain, the soil will bounce up around those seeds a little bit, those seeds will get worked in a little bit and they'll grow just as well that way too. The advantage of frost seeding really is the time of year. Clover needs some time to establish because it puts its energy into roots before it starts putting its energy into foliage from what I've read. For that reason, right now, before the leaves come out on the trees, before the grass starts greening up, that's the time to get clover seeds in there so they have all summer to, to establish themselves and then by fall they'll be rich and thick and ready to go. Another really big reason why I recommend you have two-thirds of your food plot in clover is crop rotation. You know, I'm going to do a little video on this coming up down the road too, I think. But crop rotation is important. Farmers do it for a reason. And we as deer farmers, as food plot people, we should be doing it too, I think at least. When I talk about crop rotation for food plots, clover basically is a nitrogen fixer. From what I've read, it puts nitrogen back into the soil and has little things in the roots that basically establish that nitrogen and fix that nitrogen. It doesn't require a heavy nitrogen fertilizer either for that reason. It likes a fertilizer like a 21040, something that's high on the potassium, for example, sort of middle of the road on phosphorus, but light on nitrogen. If you run clover for a couple of years, you're putting free nitrogen back into the soil. So on the third year, what I'm gonna do, plant my turnips, plant my brassicas, my wheats, whatever else, and those plants will eat that nitrogen, will use that nitrogen, and uh, deplete that from the soil. Then you go back to two years of clover and you're rotating your crops just right to sort of basically um, get some free nitrogen out of the deal as well. So that's just another reason why you want to include clover in your food plots is to help you with that rotation. And the last reason I really, really like clover is I kind of referred to it as a poor man's food plot, but it's not really, that's not doing it justice, but it's still kind of says a lot because clover is low maintenance. You don't have to spend a lot of money on it. Um, you can get away with clover. If you get a good established plot of clover, mow it and it will get rid of the weeds for you. Basically mowing, cutting the tops off all those clover plants will inspire that to grow. If you do that right before a rain, it will grow and choke out all the grasses and other weeds that are competing with it. It does a pretty good job of that. You can have a nice clover bed without even spraying it. If you want to go the extra step, broadcast some 21040 fertilizer on that clover food plot after you cut it too, right before that rain. And what will happen is it will work that fertilizer into the ground and it will boost that clover even more. That 21040 is the opposite of what a lot of those weeds want. Those weeds and those grasses all want a heavy nitrogen fertilizer. If you put on a 21040 or something like that, it's going to boost the clover but not the nitrogen. I, in the past, did a video about using a rest and slay on your clover plots. Works awesome. It will make them manicured and beautiful. That stuff's expensive. You can go that route if you need to, but you really don't have to. This year I'm going to try to, at least on most of the plots, go through and just do it with mowing. Now, 
last year. This was no sweat from Antler King. I am certain that some of that is going to be residual. Some of that's going to come up this year in my food plot. And I don't want that here necessarily. Um, so I may have to go through with some arrest to get rid of some of those grassy type plants. Uh, I might have to go through with some slay to get rid of some weeds. So I might have to go through here and spray some arrest and some slay on this food plot this year to get rid of some of those weeds and those grasses that are competing with my clover. Might have to do it here, um, but hopefully I won't. Uh, I was, I'm pretty happy with it last year. It was almost, I'd say 99% no sweat. It was not, uh, not weeds. So this year, if I can stick with that and do the mowing in here, either by hand, I can hit it with a maybe a riding mower, or maybe a weed eater or sickle, you know, use a sickle or whatever else. We'll figure it out, play it by ear. But if I, I'm hopeful that I can get in here and mow a little bit, it's way too small for the brush hog. But uh, if I get through here and mow a little bit, maybe that'll compete with, or that'll cut down on those weeds and keep this to be a beautiful lush green clover food plot. Well, I really hope you enjoy this little video on frost seeding clover. I hope you get out there and do some clover frost seeding of your own this time of your year. And don't be worried about it if you miss the, that window of the frost or whatever, not a big deal. Just clear out an area and start broadcasting on top of the soil right before a light, steady, even rain and you'll get plenty of clover i'm sure it's actually not that hard to get this stuff to grow i was really surprised with my success in the last couple of years doing the clover and uh so surprised and so happy with it that it's a big part of what we're going to be doing as far as food plots are concerned in the future here on death by bungee so that time of year. What I'm going to do now today, I have opened up this little staging food plot a little bit. Today I'm going to go through and get the rest of these trees out, the rest of this, these branches out and stuff that I have cut that uh, have opened up the canopy a little bit more to get more sunlight down in here and increase the size of this food plot. Got it about 40 yards. We'll be putting the blind up on the top end again, shooting down the hill and uh, that should be awesome. I'm really excited about this fall, but uh, fall wouldn't be as fun without the opportunity to do this kind of stuff either as far as I'm concerned. So I'm excited about this. I'm going to get the tractor down here and get all these trees out of the way, open this up a little bit more, get the leaf blower and remove the rest of this leaf cover here, clean up, clean it up and get the uh, soil exposed. Then I'll go through and frost seed today and hopefully the frost will do its job. If we get a little bit of rain later in the week like they're calling for, we will be all set. That clover will be sunk right in there and as soon as the temperature warms up, as soon as that ground temperature warms up boom we're gonna have some clover to make sure you don't miss a beat make sure you go on and like our facebook page i post pictures on there and uh you know give you updates about the food plots and stuff like that we got a thing going on there that's a lot of fun called the food plot friday having a lot of fun with that doing some pictures and updates on food plots there and we have a neat discussion going there's a lot of interesting people like in the facebook page and i'm excited about that because i get to share uh some of my little uh, insights and I get to hear their insights as well. And I'm learning a lot as we go along with this stuff. This is a constant process for me. I am not an expert at food plots, just a guy that likes deer, just a guy that likes to appreciate the outdoors. And I hope you do too. So I hope you subscribe for more videos here on YouTube, like our Facebook page. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.